Hey there. Uh, normally I do videos on basically how to calculate things, generally using Python or, or perhaps MATLAB. Uh, so this video is going to be a little bit different. It's basically an answer to some questions I've been getting on the how to calculate the, the Greeks, uh, in particular Theta. And although I didn't mention it in the video, uh, Vega, the, the, the volatility Greek, uh, first order volatility Greek would also have a similar issue here. Uh, the basic issue is that some of the numbers that come out of the Black-Scholes models, particularly the Greeks, some of them are what we call dimensionless. They have no units associated with them, whereas some of them do. The obvious example is the Greek theta, which is basically the change in the option price as a function of time, assuming everything else stays the same. Because we have that explicit time in there, we have to specify which time units are we using. Are we using seconds, years, days? Uh, what, what, what specifically are we doing? You know, coming from a, a science and engineering background, I just kind of took this for granted. But um, I'll go through and I'll show what we're doing with Theta and Vega and why the numbers you get right directly out of the Black-Scholes model may not agree with, with what's on your platform. Now, I am going to be a bit pedantic on this and insist, um, for example, Let's switch over to a platform, uh, platform. like um, the price of the stock here. Uh, I'm going to explicitly say price per unit share. Obviously, this is, you know, the price 120-ish, 121-ish uh, is the price per share. So if you bought 10 shares, it's 10 times that. Likewise, if we go to an option contract, it's priced uh, per share. So if I were to actually buy this contract, I would not be paying... Uh, 175 for it, I'd be paying 175 for it since one contract is is 100 shares. That may seem obvious, and well, it is obvious, but I just want to be specific, and you'll see why in, in a bit. So let us just uh, switch over to a notebook and get going. Okay, so this was our uh, Option, Greek's, Option Greek notebook, so let's make this a tad bit bigger. Um, when dealing with physical things like lengths or times or even things like dollars, you know, financial things, you need to assign units of measurement to to those objects, to those entities. And in order to do calculations with uh, those those quantities, we need to be consistent or at least cognizant of the units. Uh, to be somewhat silly, for example, I know this is kind of ridiculous, but if I have five feet and I add two centimeters to it, well, five plus two seven. Well, obviously not. And you would say seven what? Seven feet, seven centimeters. To be consistent, we would neither need, need to change our five feet into centimeters or our two centimeters into feet. So if we actually wanted to do, to do this, we would have to take our five feet here. Um, let's change it five feet into, into inches. So that would be five feet times 12. That would be 60 inches. And there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch, so that would be 2.54 times that. And that should give us the correct answer. So, about 154, and then now we're in the unit of centimeters. And if we wanted this in feet, we could change it back. Or as I said, we could have changed the two centimeters into to feet. But obviously, that's silly, but um, it, it makes the point. So when we come back up here to our black shoal stuff, what are the units involved here? We have a whole bunch of things. We have a stock price, we have a strike price, we have risk-free rates. Um, I'm sorry, this is time to expiration. Um, and I kind of given the way part of the secret here, it's in years, uh, risk-free rate and implied volatility. So what are the units involved with these things? Well, the stock price and the strike price and, and the option price that comes out of these models, like the call price or put price, are typically uh, per, share of dollars per share of whatever per share of the underlying stock in fact let's come down here and actually write this out and we can get rid of this here so i'm going to delete that i'm going to shut off the recording and type this all out okay so stock price strike price are both uh price per share uh times measured in years right here uh risk-free rate is per year it's some number per year usually it's a percentage uh, usually it's expressed as a percentage per year and the volatility sigma if i did my algebra correctly is one is one over the square root of time and the time will be measured in years i will double check that just to make sure um that that's correct uh but it, it's not this is not really really important to us when we deal with uh, vega we'll just call it like volatility units so let's look at uh theta now 
Uh, and for completeness, I added uh, up here that uh, the option price is also pr priced in price per share, and one uh, contract is 100 shares, a standard option contract. So the theta from the Black-Scholes model is defined like this. It's basically the time, the rate of change of the price of the option, which I called V here, is call or put, uh, per unit of time. So if you actually work out the units, what do you have? Well, this is price per share, uh, the, 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 the price of the option, price per share, just as we said, time, one per year. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. But the convention of most trading platforms, at least every single one I've used, I believe, um, option uh, theta is, is priced, or the, the theta is described as the price per contract per day. So you need to make the change from this set of units to this set of units. And let's, how do we do that transformation? Well, let's just worry about the uh, contract part here first. So, so actually I think what I'm going to do is just copy this unit part here and insert it as a, in a line here and then show how we get from this to, to this. Maybe that'll make the flow a little bit clearer. Okay, so I duplicated it. And when I upload this, maybe I'll uh, come up with some better way to, to, to show the flow of this. But how do we transform these shares into contracts? Well, what would happen if we multiplied this by 100 shares per one contract? So I multiplied it here, and you will note that one contract is equal to 100 shares. So anything that's equal to itself, anything that's equal, anything divided by itself essentially is one. So this is just a real weird way of writing the number one. So I'm not changing anything because one times anything is that anything. So if you kind of work out how the algebra will go here, the shares unit will cancel out and I'll be left with contracts. So uh, we could do the same thing for the year. One year is 365 days and you can see the way I've written it here. The years are going to cancel out and what are we going to be left with? We're going to be left with this. So to go from here to here, we need to just multiply by 100 and divide by 365, which if you look at my theta code up here, uh, I did it the other way around. We divided by 365 and multiplied by 100. Um, let's just do this again with um, Apple from the closing price on Friday and just uh, just to see how it works. Okay, so I fired up uh, Tastyworks here. I just decided to use Apple because I always use Apple. Um, we're going to look at the 135 strike. The price of the, the stock is here. Um, so I'm going to copy all this. Oh, implied volatility is here. We're going to need that. Uh, I copy this over to the notebook, and we should get a number of about 14-something for theta. And because this is uh, Friday's prices, and we're, we're, I'm recording this on a Sunday, two days after the market closed, I bumped the days to expiration from 12 to, to 14. Okay, so here is the, uh, the copying, copying of all those, all those numbers. Remember, time to expiration has to be in years. So let, we're going to need those D values here. So the function is called, uh, where is it? The function is called D and we're going to have our function. Where is, uh, where is our theta function? Theta. So let's just run, run these two snippets of code. D1, D2 is equal to D, S comma K comma R comma T. Uh, where does Sigma go in there in, in terms of arguments? Uh, sigma is first. So this should be sigma. Uh, this isn't even a coding video and I'm screwing things up. There we go. So now let's copy our theta. So uh, print theta and how do we call this function? What's the, uh, the arguments? Uh, D1, D2, SK, sigma, RT, and contract type. Let me just copy this. Copy. Paste. Uh, delete. And then our contract type is a call. So this is a C. Uh oh, uh, minus 57, and we were supposed to get what? Uh, minus 14 something. So obviously these units are wrong because, as I said, this is in, um, you know, this unit's up here. We need to go down here. So we need to multiply this by 100 and divide by 365. So let's come back in here. 365. Anyone want to take bets on whether this works? 
Yeah, pretty damn close. 15.7 as opposed to, what is this? 14 something, 14.6. So now let's just look at uh, Vega. Okay, so Vega is the change in our volatility, change in our option price per unit of volatility. So the price, of course, is the same as price per share. And our volatility, I'm just going to call it vol point. It's going to be one over vol point. It's one, it's, it's one per, per vol point. But trading platforms usually give this as a uh, single percentage point change in volatility. So we need to change vol points to percentage of vol points. So in other words, uh, one vol point is going to be equal to 100 percentage points. So I need to calculate this number, and in principle, I need to divide it by 100. So let's actually see if that's correct. I copied um, from our previous sessions our volatility code here. So let me... Uh, actually, we don't need this C0 anymore. Uh, let's run this and uh, see what we get. So, print Vega uh, Sigma S, K, R, and T. So we get 6.82, 6.83 roughly. So let's go over to the trading platform. We will change this to Vega. So the number we should get is about 0 0.07. So again, we're off by about a factor of 100, which is exactly what we said. We need to take this and divide it by, by 100. So let's just come in here and do that. Done. 0 0.068 or rounding it up 0 0.07. Perfect. Okay, I'm just going to call it quits here because I don't want this to run on forever. This is pretty easy. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it was clear because I've gotten several questions on it. Uh, what I will do is I'll try to clean this up, uh, make sure the, the workbook kind of flows in a better manner so you can actually see what's going on. Um, and I'm not going to bother with an, any sort of outro because this is uh, really, really simple. So, cool. Until next time, I will see you.